You know, no one enjoys doing a second-rate job of house painting more than I do. But I'd rather chat about wargaming. Now, hi everyone. Now, what I'd like to talk about today is barbed wire. Barbed wire and wargaming. Now, I don't know how many um, battle reports you've watched from various people in various genres, but I've not seen too much barbed wire deployed in any of them. Uh, we've used it a few times over the years in uh, our war games, but uh, it struck me that not a lot of people are using barbed wire to simulate obstacles or field defences or anything like that. And so when I get a particular thing in my mind, I thought, let's see if we can develop some barbed wire. So what I'll show you today is um, some techniques and ideas I've developed and uh, some of the barbed wire I've made and just see what you think. I will game in 28mm so the scale is around about that but the barbed wire I make can be scaled up but um, yeah various techniques it's all art it's all fun so just see what you think. Barbed wire well here's a small piece I prepared earlier it's only a, a smaller gauge, more domestic piece of barbed wire, but the construction is the same as for all of them. It, can, uh, it consists of two strands of wire, with the barbs evenly spaced along it being separate pieces of twisted wire. Now, it, um, I'm not going to be able to replicate this exactly, but certainly, hopefully, I'll make something that looks reasonably like it at uh, a smaller scale without too much scrutiny. As you can see with uh, rust, no matter that this was galvanised, after exposure, after a year or so, it does start to rust from exposure to the elements. And uh, reddish brown going up to a, a light orange is the sort of rust colour you might want to touch up your wire with when you finish it. Now what I'm scenery. going to try and do in my example is, um, obviously I can't replicate this exactly, but certainly it arm's distance away it won't look too bad on your gaming table so um, I'll show you some of the techniques I've uh, recorded and uh, but it's made out of basically very fine plastic fly screen which you can get at your hardware store fairly inexpensively I think it was like a dollar fifty for half a meter of it and that'll last me for years as well as um, beading wire I came across this by accident when I was um, cleaning up some of my wife's beading materials and I found what I've been looking for for years, very fine wire. I previously used fuse wire to make barbed wire in uh, decades past but I was never really happy with it but I'm much happier with the result I've got today and it basically involves um, getting a strand of wire, wrapping a thin strip of cut out fly screen around it which makes up the little barbs and then um, counter twisting that with another strand of beading wire on top. So um, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. What do we need for barbed wire? Well firstly, I like a very fine wire so I've pinched some of my wife's beading wire. This is size 32G and you get 24 yards or 21.94 meters per roll. It's very fine which is excellent because of the scale we're working at. We want something that's quite fine. You need just an old pair of scissors to cut the wire with. You need fly screen, just plastic fly screen available quite inexpensively from any hardware store. Try and get the one with the smallest grids possible. You need to make yourself a wiring jig. And this is just a scrap piece of timber with two nails, one popped in either end, and just sand the edges so that the uh, strips of barbs you make out of the fly screen get attached to it. A piece of 10mm dowel because that is what you'll be wrapping your wire around. Just a hobby knife to cut the fly screen with. And it's always handy to have a pair of just craft tweezers. And that's all you need. After that it's up to you as to how you undercoat it and decorate it. So, let's begin. What do I do first? 
So what you do here is you get your fly screen, just plastic fly screen, the smallest mesh you can find available at your hardware store. Then you cut it out. Now one thing to note is that these little meshes form little rectangles. You want to carve down the length of the rectangle, not across. It will provide you with much smaller barbs. Then you just simply with a sharp cutting knife, mind your fingers, just cut down the middle. Hold it at the top and away you go. There. And what that leaves you with is a nice little string of little crisscrosses. These will become your bars. Okay, got my wiring jig here. What I do is get wire and just secure it to one end. I just wrap it around twice, and then loop the end of the wire around once or twice. You don't have to go too hard on it, but you just want it secure so that if it tugs under the tension, it won't pull loose. Go to the other end, loop it around twice, hope it's tense. There we go, once, twice, we'll go under, scissors, go once, twice. Right, pull there. Now, we get a piece of these strips I've cut previously from the fly screen. Then I just secure it here to one end, just roughly. You don't have to do a very good job, just entangle it in a piece of existing scrap wire, or even just hold it there with your finger. To start with, I like to go counterclockwise. And after a few turns, you find that the strand will hold itself there quite firmly. So you don't have to do it tightly. Just keep it fairly well spaced, because the barbs and barbed wire aren't really close together. They're about a hand grip apart. and just proceed along and go quite quickly. Now if you do do it too tightly, and I'll just show you, if you do start to bunch it up a bit, it's easily fixed. So all you have to do is just run your fingers along it and spread it out. And it's all done. Just run your fingers along. I do it without even thinking. I just run my fingers along it and it spreads it out. And you just keep doing this till the end, eh? it takes you a couple of minutes. Right here we are near the end. I'll show what I do at the end just to hold it in place. It generally won't unravel anyway if you do let go. See it's not unraveling. Because of the slight tension you're keeping on it while you're twisting it tends to form it around the, the guide wire ready for the next wire. Now, the next strand of wire, just, just get it on once and just tie it off. Lock it into place. Now, make sure you've got about four fingers worth of wire left over at the end. Because as you twist, of course, your wire will shorten. And you don't want to come up short. Now I start twisting clockwise this time. And the whole time maintaining a bit of tension. And you don't have to wind it tightly. You can keep your spacing one to two millimeters apart. That's more than sufficient for a good barbed wire effect. And once I get a couple of inches out from the right hand nail, I find it quite easy and 
a lot easier to manage by holding it and maintain the tension and just to control how the twisting goes. So I'll show you that in a few seconds. Each time you go around, just a gentle bit of tension. <coughs> you don't want your barbed wire to be loose and sloppy, but it's pretty hard to muck this up. So, you work out a method that works for you. I'm sure some genius out there will work out a way to do this with a drill, but I quite like the slight randomness, slight irregularity of everything here. And I have complete control over all the elements I'm using. When I use power tools, you know, it can be quicker, but if you muck it up, you've got to start all over again. Whereas if you're doing this manually, it's very, very hard to stuff up. It's very hard. As we come near the end, and I find you get quicker and quicker the further along the strand you go. Nearly the end. And I think I judged my wire length about right. Good. Very good. I haven't got short. Okay, then we cut it, it doesn't unravel, see, perfectly sturdy, cut the other end, and there we have it, 40 centimeters of miniature barbed wire, I don't think it looks too bad, all I do now is I just give it a flat black undercoat with spray paint. I'll wait till I get quite a lot of strands together so I can do them all in one go and not waste paint. And uh, there you have it. Now to make a barb out of it, a roll of barbed wire out of it, it's very simple. Just get some 10 millimeter dowel and just start wrapping it around here. You don't have to be too tight with it, it's pretty easy to work with. And if you make a mistake, you just pull it straight and start all over again. It's very durable. You can redo it again and again. But there you have it. Some barbed wire. There's a notional 28mm figure. And that's about waist height. I think um, our rolls of wire are about 90 centimetres or 900 mil high. So two of those would be about man height. But yeah, I don't think it looks too bad. And there you go. Here's a short gallery of a few terrain bases I've made up using barbed wire and I've included a few miniatures for perspective. So uh, I hope you enjoy what I've done and thanks very much for watching. Cheers.